What's up everybody, it's Jason Cruz here once again with another episode of The Legal Submission. And before we begin, I'd like to thank all the new subscribers that have checked out the channel, the people who visited MMAPayout.com, the followers on Twitter. Thank you very much. Let's continue to, to bolster up the community here. MMAPayout.com, the YouTube channel, the Substack, it's all good news if you are interested in the legal world and business happenings in combat sports. Now we're going to take a little break from the uh, UFC antitrust lawsuit, but we'll be back. Uh, but we, I wanted to uh, go back to the Miljas Mladen uh, Cohen lawsuit because uh, looking through that particular lawsuit, we find a little loophole in the Ali Act that does need to be uh, amended at some point down the road. And it relates to the type of evidence and the particular damages that the Ali Act seeks. Now, if you may recall that Mladen Miljas was the uh, heavyweight boxer that was uh, represented by Greg Cohen and uh, Greg Cohen Promotions and Mill just had in had filed a lawsuit claiming that Cohen didn't put up his end of the bargain as far as being a promoter and helping promote him correctly now the uh, it, for, lawsuit was in Iowa and we could you could all think of uh, go back to the legal submissions where I talk about this the lawsuit was in the federal court of Iowa and they found in favor of Milgis now the lawsuit is still pending a motion for new trial by C Greg Cohen's counsel as well as a potential for maybe uh, an appeal I don't think the appeal is happening but uh, anyway as far as the assessment goes regarding the Ali Act claims, which Mill just uh, argued that Cohen did not provide him the adequate information pursuant to the Ali Act as far as what the promoter would be receiving as part of uh, the fighter's fight. And so that case, that, that information went to uh, the jury and there were several questions about uh, about the issues at the deliberations of the jury. So the case was over. They are given what's called jury instruction. Now, jury instructions are things that you you, you might not know if, unless you've litigated a case before. But jury instructions basically are the guide rails, the instructions as to how to utilize the evidence and how to weigh the evidence. So there's during the trial, evidence is, is uh, entered, entered into evidence. So they must uh, provide all of the documentation, whether it's uh, depositions, transcripts, actual documents that they want to introduce into evidence and put into evidence, things of that nature. A jury will look at, at the time of deliberations, and then you uh, focus on the instructions in how to apply that uh, evidence to the instructions. So a question came up from the Milgis Cohen lawsuit. The jury had asked regarding the Muhammad Ali Boxing Reform Act, what is the prize bill he prize bid held for the boxing match? Can we get a definition? Interesting enough, the the attorneys and the court outside the, outside of the jury so the jury wasn't present when this was happening outside of the jury had uh, conferred us to if there was a particular definition by the act whether there's case law or whether there's something that they actually put into evidence at the time of trial to help guide the jury and the answer was no. In fact, the court had done some research itself and based upon the attorneys at the, at, at the trial, based upon the act, there is nothing that guides them as far as what a prize bid is a pursuant to the Muhammad Ali Boxing Reform Act. Well, what is a prize bid? So I guess that uh, that's uh, subjective as well, because uh, is it something that the boxer is receiving as payment? Is it the inf uh, does it encompass what the promoter is supposed to report to the boxer prior to the fight? 
what what actually is it? And the court had to tell the, the jury that you will need to rely upon informa information presented during trial. I am unable to provide a further definition for you. So <clears throat> things like that happen all the time where juries ask uh, the court for some help because they can't interpret it based upon the rules. It's not that their jury is not doing their job or they're not paying attention. It's just that sometimes the instructions aren't uh, self-evident. So, uh, in fact, the jury found in favor of Milgis in this case, but the interesting part on this is that the, there are two questions regarding the Muhammad Ali Boxing Reform Act. So, has, the first question was, has Mladen Milgis proved his Muhammad Ali Boxing Reform Act claim against Greg Cohen Promotions? Please check yes or no, and the jury said yes, they have. Second question, was what amount of damages should Mladen Milgis be awarded for his Muhammad Ali Boxing Reform Act claim against Greg Cohen promotions? And the answer was zero, and court costs and reasonable attorney fees and expenses. So the court costs and reasonable attorney's fees and expenses, the court went over and basically said that it is not, that those things are not something that uh, a jury has to calculate. Because you get into the question of reasonable attorney's fees, what is that? How, do they really know what the court costs for filing fees, for deposition fees, things of that nature? So <clears throat> that's okay. But the zero regarding the amount of damage proven at trial is a little bit concerning. Uh, at least for Milgis' part, where they the questions go on regarding do you find a preponderance of, of clear, convincing, and satisfactory evidence that the conduct of Greg Cohen's constituted willful and wanton disregard for the rights or safety of another? The answer was yes. And the punitive damages amount is uh, given by the court of $200,000. So essentially, even though the court did not I mean, even though the jury did not award any actual damages for Milgis, uh, they did give him punitive damages of $200,000 under the claims regarding the Ali Act. And that's all well and good if you are actually in a, in a jurisdiction that issues punitive damages. So punitive damages are what you think. They're punishment damages based upon the acts of the uh, individual or entity. So in this case, uh, the, uh, the jury determined that Greg Cohen uh, was, through the evidence presented, was willful and wanton disregard for the rights or safeties of Mlad Milgis and in violation of the Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali Boxing Reform Act. The issue is in some jurisdictions, for example, Washington State, they do not have punitive damages. So you would have to either uh, claim the actual, prove the actual damages or claim other sorts of damages related to the Muhammad Ali Boxing Reform Act. That is problematic for several reasons. One, the act itself does not clarify what type of damages uh, a boxer can claim. In this instance, the jury decided to award the punitive damages because it was the easier thing to do. You could, a punitive damages, you don't, don't really need a calculation. You just need to side with, side with one party and decide how much money it is. You don't have to go itemized, uh, itemization about how, many damage, how much damage did they uh, did cause. It would be harder under the Ali Act if you were have, had to prove actual damages. So basically, uh, itemizing, you know, we missed out on $10,000 for missing out on this fight. He did not disclose that he made $25,000 off of uh, concessions or uh, pay-per-view points or uh, licensing of the of the television uh, contracts, things of that nature. So uh, there, there is that issue as well. So uh, from um, the individual standpoint for Milgis, that's great. He gets $200,000 in punitive damages. But the overarching issue uh, moving forward regarding the Ali Act is that 
there is no real uh, specification as far as what promoters have to provide, when they pr have to provide it, although there is uh, some guidance, but it, it, is, it is vague. And the type of damages a boxer might be able to recover if they are claiming under this act. Uh, those are important things simply because if they are not there, it makes it harder for the boxer to claim a case. I argue, in my opinion, that the, the uh, Muhammad Ali Boxing Reform Act is hard to litigate in and of itself because if you are a boxer, you are probably not, uh, do not have the monetary means to full on litigate against uh, a promoter with, with uh, a, a cash of money or a manager that has money as well. So th that's an issue moving forward, and I think that is something that needs to be look for, looked into uh, at some point when a a the legislators determine uh, whether to amend the act or amend it for uh, UFC fighters. Well, that's it. Jason Cruz with uh, uh, the legal submission, MMAPayout.com. Continue to follow us, guys. Uh, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.